I'm breaking the parchment. You're breaking the parchment. It's like, you know. I think that we're done. I think we're done here. <laughs> Hello, welcome to Home Movies. My name is Allison Roman, and today I am making crispy cutlets, specifically pork cutlets, but this recipe could be made with pork or chicken. I kind of want to, I wanted to show both. That might take too much time. Does it take too much time? I don't know, it's like doing one instead of two and whatever. Okay, we'll show you both. Yeah. We'll live a little. Basically, the idea is the same either way. We're gonna cut the protein into a manageable piece. We're gonna pound it out a little bit thinly. We're gonna coat it in some breadcrumbs and we're gonna shallow pan fry it. I like to serve this type of cutlety crispiness with something tangy, like a crunchy salad. I'm gonna use fennel, but you know, you can kind of use whatever you want. There are many versions of this dish. Uh, depending on where you are in the world, there's like crispy pork tonkatsu in Japan, there's schnitzel, in a lot of places, there's milanese. I would say that this is definitely closer to like a milanese than definitely not a tonkatsu, which is like thicker and deep fried. And the breadcrumbs are panko. They're not fine breadcrumbs like a schnitzel. So it's kind of like using a lot of different, uh, borrowing a lot of different techniques and ingredients from different crispy cutlets around the world. And, and this to me is I think the best version. We'll do one pork chop, one chicken breast. How about that? I love that for us. We do want to sort of cut them down so we're not pounding out something so thick. It's easier with a chicken breast because there's less marbling, but don't stress too much. We are gonna be pounding it out so it will even out in thickness, but also we're gonna be covering it in breadcrumbs and frying it. It's gonna be delicious no matter what shape it's in. Basically, you're looking to start with something that's about a half an inch thick. Make sure you wash all that salmonella out of your open wound that you gave yourself this morning. But basically you're gonna do one at a time and just place it. And like, honestly, you want something that's heavy that has a flat surface. This jar is actually not flat. Not flat. But you know it is flat. It's the bottom of a skillet. You wanna do this on something that can handle it. Like this butcher block is pretty sturdy. Five, six, eight. Oof, sorry. Not, not quite my tempo. What you don't want to do is miss the pork and hammer your kitchen counter like I've been doing, but you know. Wow. So you're going from this thickness and this size to this thickness and this size. Certain like cutlets or schnitzels can be almost too thin. So when you eat it, it's like almost no meat. It's like just breading and fried and there's like a vague meatiness. I like it when there's like, a good bit of the actual meat in it. I like to taste that. So this is, you know, how thin I like to go, knowing that, you know, protein, when you cook, it's gonna contract a little bit. So what you'll end up with is like a very, very juicy piece of chicken coated in really crispy breadcrumbs. And now we're gonna do the pork. I like this brand because um, it's like super passive aggressive. It's like, oh, recycled parchment, if you care. Also, the font is like aggressive. If it were like, if you care, smiley face, that's still pretty passive aggressive. Honestly. Wait, wait, wait. This is just more aggressive. <laughs> Recycled parchment, if you care. <laughs> I'm a bad pork cutlet. <laughs> I'm joking. It's a joke. I just watch billions a lot. We've gone from this to this. Typically with like a crispy pork or crispy chicken cutlet, um, there's like a flour egg breadcrumb situation. I'm skipping the flour because I don't think that you need it. I've tested both ways where there's flour involved and one where there's not flour involved. And honestly, there was zero difference. The egg stayed on, the breadcrumb stayed on the egg and I never needed that extra step of the flour. So we're not gonna do it. If you wanted to season your breadcrumbs with something like finely grated Parmesan, chili flake, crushed fennel seed, you could easily do that and it would be really, really delicious. But I'm just gonna keep this simple. So this is kind of like the station that we're using. You don't need like 40 plates. You don't need another tray. It doesn't need to be this like big dramatic to do. So when you use panko, see how it looks kind of like sparsely not coated? 
That will change as soon as you start pressing into it and kind of like really making sure every single piece of surface area for this cutlet is coated in breadcrumb. A tale of two cutlets. No? If you, like me, are wanting to serve this crispy cutlet with something on the side and don't really know what to serve it with, I feel like you have your protein and your starch in one here. So I always like to just go for like a crispy, crunchy salad. I'm just gonna cut up some fennel, but you could use, I'm thinking like radishes would be really nice here. Even celery would be really, really great as like a side crispy, crunchy salad. Actually, I'm gonna use a mandolin, something I rarely do, but I kind of want like it really, really super, super, super thin. I'm gonna cover this in cold water and it's gonna make the fennel really, really crispy and it's gonna kind of curl up a little bit. It's gonna look really cool. I'm just gonna set this aside. You'll see. Oh, you'll see. What are we doing now? We're thinly slicing the shallot to add to our little fennel salad. It's time to take our crate. <laughs> I don't need your lack of confidence in me, David. It's the end of the day. You're doing a great job. What do you mean? I just, I blundered and you went, Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so take it easy. Um, it's time to take our cutlets and make them crispy. <laughs> I was working on that one. I'm using a large 12 inch skillet. I'm gonna attempt to do both cutlets in this at the same time, which is why I'm using a 12 inch. It's an all clad skillet, thanks for asking. The skillet itself is super fast to heat up. And not only is it fast to heat up, but it's super even when it does heat up. So ostensibly, you know, the center is as hot as the edges, which is really, really important when making stuff like cutlets. And honestly, I've had these got, I don't know, eight years at least, maybe longer. And it performs today the way it did when I bought it. We are just cooking these until they're golden brown because they're so thin that by the time the breadcrumbs are golden brown, the meat is gonna be cooked through. It's like two to three minutes per side. I'm just gonna let it get golden brown on that side too. Um, our funnel, which has been like nice and crisped up in this bowl, I'm just gonna get rid of the water. We add some shallots, some lemon. I'm gonna salt these with flaky salt as well when they come off. I want like half these pickles, so. Mmm, so good. This is just like a fun, like natural cider that I picked up the other day. I think it would be good with this. I would also drink a martini with this. I would drink literally anything with this. Beer would be great. A crisp pilsner. I don't know, I don't know, I don't know like how to beer. describe beer. <laughs> Me neither. Okay, well here I go, dinner for two for one, I guess. Which one is that? Pork. Mmm, it's so good. And the best part is that, like, because we're not searing the piece of meat directly, nothing feels dried out or anything. Like, it all feels still, like, really crunchy and juicy. But yeah, so panko, I like panko for this. I feel like it's extra, extra crispy. But I've done this with great satisfaction with, like, a finer breadcrumb as well. Mmm, so good. I think that you should make this for someone that you really care about. Earnestly, I think that. I think that you should like as a gift to someone that you really like, maybe even love, you should say, I wanna make you a special dinner. And this is like a fun, casual, special dinner. It's like very easy and doesn't take a lot of time, but it feels to me quite special. It feels like, I don't know, like I wouldn't bread and pan fry a cutlet for just anybody. But once you put like the dish of pickles and you have like a little mustard and some like cute wine, I feel like it becomes like a full meal and it does remind me of a restaurant and I don't know, it feels like considerate. And thank you so much to All Clad for sponsoring this video. Oh. Okay, oh. Get, you gotta get the pork chop. Okay, <laughs> okay. I think I did a pretty good job. <laughs> Considering I'm holding a camera.